first Sunday of the eight. And uh, well, I was just glad to be in church. Amen. Verse seven or eight. I'm going to read one verse. Well, I'll read a few verses, seven through nine. I had originally said one verse, but I'll read all three of them. The Bible said in 1 Samuel 8, verse 7, And the Lord said unto Samuel, Hearken unto the voice of the people, and all that they say unto thee. For they have not rejected thee, but they have rejected me, that I should not reign over them. No, I, according to all the works which they have done, since the, all the works uh, uh, which they have done since the day that I brought them up out of Egypt, even unto this day, work, work, work with, they have forgotten me and served other gods, so do they also unto thee. Verse 9. Now therefore, hearken unto their voice, albeit yet protest solemnly unto them, and show them the manner of the king that shall reign over them. Father, would you help me now with your blessing? Just a few folks moments. Help us to get a hold of the great truth that you give to us today. We love you, Lord, and we realize that you love us in a special way. You love us enough to keep working in our hearts, to keep being patient with us, keep trying to get us back to you. So help today, dear God, for us to understand. Maybe we walked away. Maybe it's so much that, that, that we walked away and done so much evil, but we just don't live in a way that's pleasing, of course, in your sight by way of just doing what you want us to do. God, I sure hope we get an understanding. In Jesus' name, amen. <laughs> If you look at this text, most of you know what it is. This is when the children of Israel finally said to uh, 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 Samuel, we want a king. We want to be just like everybody else. And here's the thing about it. This is amazing to me. God already knew they were going to ask for a king. Right. Even before they, they even considered having a king, yeah. God already knew they wanted a king. And uh, God talked about what the king should do over the book of Deuteronomy 17, about how he should take the word of God and write a copy of it, and how he, of course, is supposed to obey what, what's in the book and stuff. Talk about not getting all these wives, not getting all these horses, and uh, not, not multiplying all this wealth. He told them what the king should be doing. For God already knew they would want a king, but the day finally has come where they say, you know what? We want a king. Now, God says to Samuel, he says, Samuel, because Samuel got upset about it. He said, Samuel, I want you to understand. Do what they said do. Because the truth of the matter is this. They haven't rejected you. They rejected me. They don't want me to have the rule over them. They don't want me to be the one telling them what to do. They just don't want me anymore. They, they kind of throw me out. They want, they want kings like everybody else. And of course, he said, now when you finally let them know, okay, they have a king, tell them how the king's going to treat them. Tell them how the king's going to take them take land from them and charge them taxes and make their kids slaves. Yeah. Tell, tell them all that stuff is going to happen. And of course, you know what people say? We still want this king. We want a king. And so, uh, so I want you to get a hold of that today here. The problem today in America, let me put it, the problem today in the world is that the world does not want God ruling over them. Yeah. Yeah. The world is saying, you know what, we, we, we don't want him. We got our own kings. We got our own uh, uh, house of representatives, our own senators, our own president. We got our own going on. And by the way, if anything we want is opposite of what God wants, we want what we want instead of what God wants. That's the kind of way it is right now. And so our subject today is this, the world's problem with God. The world's problem with God. What, 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 what kind of problem does the world have with God? Yeah. Let me just be honest with you, right up front, and I'll say it again at the end, same problem that we have. Same problem not only that the world has, but same problem many times people in the church have. And what's that? Letting God be their king. Yeah. That means that he's going to be their ruler. He's going to set the regulations. He's going to take and decide how people are going to live. He's supposed to reign over. By the way, if you are saved, this is not your life anyway, your body anyway. It belongs to the Lord. It's been redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. Amen. And so we're supposed to do what God tells us to do. But we got this problem today. What's that? Letting God be the authority in our lives. And so, so you notice here, the Bible says here, they, they, uh, God said, they have rejected me. So, first of all, I want you to write this down with introduction. This is kind of on your outline here. But I want you to understand the rejection of God. 
the rejection of God. Basically, here's what they're telling God is we don't want you involved like that in our life, or we don't want you over us in our life. We want somebody else doing this. Yeah. So let me just help you with something here. When you and I reject God, what we're doing is this. We're saying we're going to let somebody else reign and rule in our lives. Yeah. It, it might be us. It may be the world. But understand something. If God is not going to be you. Can I ask you a question? What kind of problem do we have with God that we reject with God, that we say, God, you can't rule in my life? Has God mistreated us? Has God done us wrong? Has God led us astray? I say not. Somebody say amen. amen. God been good to us. You hear all things amen. better to us than we deserve. Amen. amen. But somehow we rejected God even in our own lives. So they reject God. Watch this now. Not only their rejection of God, but their refusal to let God have a position. They got to start on y'all line. Let me get this. Their refusal to let God have a position that God should have. Yeah. God deserves this position. Yeah. God desires this position because he wants to help us. Right. And you and I should just hold back because he hadn't demanded the position. But we ought to look at him and say, God, you don't have to demand it. Why? Because we're one of them allowed you to have it. Amen. But there's a refusal in our life. We rejected God and we refused to let God have a place that God should have in our life. Can I ask you a question? The world has a problem with God. Do you have a problem with him too? Do I have the same problem with him where I'm rejecting him, where I'm refusing him? By the way, the world has a problem with God. What's that? They ridicule the things of God. Ridicule the things of God. They're ridiculous to do this. They're ridiculous to do that. And, and I don't know why. I have to live this guy. Wait a minute. Hold on a second. Yes, the world has a problem. But do we have a problem? Do we ridicule God? Do we basically say, God, it doesn't make sense. I don't know why you want this. I don't understand. So I'm not going to do this. That's what's happening in the world today. As a matter of fact, you need to understand this here. When the world has something, get this now, goes through the law or through politics, they rejoice over it when God's sitting on his throne sad over it. They rejoice over it. Do you, do you understand there's so many people that rejoice because this world has basically taken over and this world has told God, see, yeah, we can do what we want to do. And there ain't a thing you can do about it. Hey, I got some news for you. You better hold on because God's going to do his thing one of these days. But guess what? They're rejoicing over a lot of this stuff going on in the land. We ought, to say to, we ought to say right now, you know what, God? I don't have a problem. I'm not rejoicing over these things going on. I'm not rejoicing. Listen to me now. They don't have a problem with me after this mess of problem. But I'm not rejoicing over what's going on in our schools. Come on, help me now. I'm not rejoicing over the laws that our nation is making. Amen. I'm not rejoicing over the fact that they've gotten rid of God and they don't want him around anymore. Hey, they got a problem with God, but I ain't got a problem with God. They rejected God. They refused God. They ridiculed God. They're rejoicing because they, get, they think they're getting their way and get the hold of this here. Their reasoning that they have now is this. There must not be a God. Mm -hmm. yes. When they get to reasoning and look at all of what's going on, somehow they say there must not be a God. Yeah, that's what they're saying today. You have a problem with God. The world has a problem with God. You and I don't. We still believe there's a God, right? Let me tell you what happens when they get to this place. Write it down, Exodus 5, verse number 2. Exodus 5, and verse number 2. Exodus 5, verse number 2. What has happened today? Same thing that happened way back there in Egypt. Mm. What happened in Egypt? The Bible says, and Pharaoh said, Who is the Lord that I should obey his voice and let Israel go? Who is the Lord that I'm supposed to listen to what he's got to say and do what he told me to do? Mm. Basically, it basically said this is here. And look what he said. I know not the Lord, neither will I let Israel go. Who is he? I don't know. I don't know. The God, the God you guys are talking about, the God that you came here and said, he said, let my people go. Who is that? And that's the way it is in the world today. Yeah. You know, sometimes we knock on doors right now, and you've got people who don't even know who Adam and Eve is. Yeah. 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 They have no clue about such yeah. things. Yeah. It's crazy how we've been going through the book of Daniel, and God has been giving us history that from Daniel was history, but for now, what, for, uh, uh, Daniel's prophecy for now is history, and you understand people won't even admit that God said all that before it even happened. Yeah. 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 God prophesied, and then the history came along. Yeah. Yeah. What? There's no God. Who is God? I don't know him. I don't have to be bothered with him. I don't have to listen to what he says. Could I ask a question? The world has a problem with God. But do you have a problem with God? Are you and I in a place just like the world where we say, dear God, you're not going to have the authority in my life? Then God, you need to understand, I'm not going to respond always the way you want me to. 
Do we have a problem with God? The world has a problem with God. Yeah. And I'm going to get ready to just lay some things out here that I hope you and I will get a hold of. First of all, the, the world has a problem with the person of God. Yeah. They have a problem with the person of God, with his preeminence. They have a problem with that. Even his dominance is what I'm talking about. They have a problem with that. They have a problem because guess what? They all want to be God. They're all just like the devil. I will and I will and I will. Let me tell you something here. You'll never get to the I will of God. Amen. You'll never reach his level. You'll never become who God is. I don't care how much you try to fly to the moon or try to get to the stars. I'm telling you something. You'll never be like God. Amen. They have a problem with that. Because there's not supposed to be anybody superior in any kind of way. Write this down, Isaiah 45. Are you still with me saying that? Amen. Isaiah 45, verse 18. For thus said the Lord that created the heavens. By the way, there's no God like our God. Yeah. God himself that formed the earth and made it. He established it. He created it not in vain. He formed it to be in heaven. And get this here. I am the Lord and there is none else. Amen. God says you need to nail that right down. There ain't nobody like me. Amen. 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 Have a problem with this person. Because there's always supposed to be somebody like him, mm. somebody who can measure up to him, somebody that can equal him. Well, then let me tell you something. I'll do like they did in days of old when they had a uh, uh, scientist saying, uh, I can do what God did. And then, of course, God said, well, come on, let's get it done. And then so the scientists gathered this and gathered that because they were going to make a world like God did. And when they got done here, God said, oh, well, wait a minute, time out. Why don't you do it like I did? Well, how did you do it? Out of nothing. Amen. 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 Ain't no God like our God. No God with ability like our God. No God is capable like our God. Our God created it. Our God controlled it. Our God commanded it. And there ain't no God like our God. Amen. Right. I don't care what they say. They can get mad with me all they want to. You say, preacher, are they getting mad with you? Yes, they're getting mad with me. They're getting mad with all kinds of preachers like me. They're just saying, say, one day, you don't have to answer to God. One day, every day is going to bow and every time he's going to confess that he is Lord. Amen. We've got a problem today. Now, I hope you young people get a hold of this here. We have a problem and they're trying to take you young people's mind so you don't believe like we're believing. They want you to have a problem with God. They want you to doubt God. They want you to deny God. They want you to disobey God. You need to look at them right in the face and say, I know God and there's no God like my God. I don't care how you try to make one, create one. I don't care. You can't do what my God can do. Amen. Amen. There's only one God. And it's time for us to not write, write this down. Because God says, you must have a problem with me too. With my person, who I am, what I'm able to do. Because, write this down, Luke 6, 46. Luke 6, 46. And why I call you me Lord, Lord, and do not the things which I say. You know the reason why? Because we got a problem with God. Yeah. Most of us will never admit, I got a problem with you, God, trying to run my life, trying to tell me what, I've got a problem with that. And that's where the world is right now. Mm -hmm. Let me help you a little bit more. You see there? Mm -hmm. Not only are they upset with the person of God, but they're upset with the precepts of God. Yeah. The doctrines of God. The word. Come on, help me now. Yeah. They don't like the, they, they have a problem with that. Yeah. They, they don't like God's word. And, and what they want to do is want to say, well, uh, uh, my God, well, we're done upstairs over here. Your God is probably not the God of the Bible. Yeah. Yeah. Because the God of the Bible does not agree with a lot of stuff that's going on today. Yeah. And they've got a problem with our God. And sadly, that, that problem has come into the church. Yeah. They have a problem with, with God, with his position of his word in their life. God's word doesn't have a position it's supposed to have in their life. The position is above all. Amen. The position yeah. is priority. Make our lives pure and, and a pattern after God's word. Yeah. We don't want the position that God's word should have. But I need you to understand something here. God's word, are you, are you with me? Yeah. God's word is, is a word that he's kept from back then to right now. Yeah. They don't like that. Matter of fact, here's what, here's what they want to do, by the way. Can I help you with something? Here's what they want to do in America. They want to change what's known as the Constitution. Yeah. They want to change it. You know why? Because we needed to fit what we wanted to do. Yeah. Fit the way we believe. Yeah. And you know what they do with the Word of God? They want to do the same thing. Yeah. You say, preacher, but the Constitution is not the Word of God. I understand that, but I want you to understand what they're doing little by little. They're changing and they're repositioning yeah. and making it fit the way they believe. Yeah. And then when all of a sudden you get 
the Supreme Court that said this is not constitutional, they start they say you don't understand the Constitution. No, you don't understand the Constitution. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not going to get into all that detail, but let me just tell you something. Most of us don't understand the Word of God. Here's where the Word of God works. God has not changed what He said in His Word. That's right. Yeah. And He's telling us, you better not change what I said in my word. Right. Right. God has given us truth. He's given us his text, his teaching, and he wants it to be what transforms our lives. Amen. We got a problem with God's word. Right. We got a real big problem. So we got a problem with the person of God. We got a problem with the precepts of God. Are you still with me? Say amen. amen. We got a problem with some of the particulars of God in his word. Yes. Tell me about that preacher. Some of the little details in, in the teachings in God's word. We got a problem with that. But I'm going to a question. That's the world. Do we have the same problem? Mm. Do we have a problem with some of the little particulars and details? Oh, don't, don't, don't be quiet on me now. You, you need to understand something here. We've got a problem today. And we've got a problem even in the church. Let, let's just see if we've got a problem with some of the things. How about this? Do we have, do we have a problem when it comes to the morals uh, and the morality? That, come on now. Amen. Do we have a problem with the way God has set things up? The manner, listen to me now, the manner in which God has placed things? Yeah. Can, can I just say something to you? See, here's what God did. God said, here you go, this is Adam. Here you go, this is Eve. Here you go, be fruitful and multiply. Yeah. 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 Amen. You need to understand something. All of this here, look, I don't understand science. I don't know how biology goes. All I know is this. There's a man and there's a woman and they're supposed to have some children. Amen. Amen. There's no way that we're going to be able to follow the Bible and men keep in with men and women keep in with women. Yeah. There's going to be somebody. I don't care what they say. There are no more other sexes than just a male and a female. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Right. But we have the problem in the church today. People argue that wait, maybe, maybe God made some of them like that. God didn't make it. Matter of fact, I so I wish my sister was here. She passed away now. But my sister even said, I wasn't a lesbian because God made me that way. I was a lesbian because I wanted to be. I was a lesbian because what they bought me. I was a lesbian because I got cars and houses and all the other stuff that goes along with it. She said, that's the reason why I was a lesbian. Yeah. Yeah. And I remember when she got saved, and she said, I don't want that life. Hey, how can you, if you are that way, get saved and not leave it on the feet? Come on, help me now. I don't care what they say. They got a problem with God. Amen. Right. That's right. Amen. Yeah. 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 There is no, again, okay with men and again with men and women, or with women. No, amen. Uh, amen. Amen. Amen now. But because we got a problem with that, we got a problem with marriage. Right, yeah. 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 We got a problem with marriage today. Yeah. Preacher, what's the problem with marriage? Again, man's supposed to leave his father and mother and he's supposed to cling to his wife. Right. Yeah. Supposed to be, come on now. Yeah. And then God said, let me help you something about marriage. Hebrews 13, verse number 4. Marriage is honored when all in the bed under vow, the whoremongers and adulterers, God will judge. Yeah. Yeah. They got a problem. They got a problem when you stand up and say, well, you should be able to leave your options open. Well, God just wants you to be happy. Yeah. Let me tell you something here. God said that he, when he joined together, that no man puts. Amen. You say, preacher, but there is a, a clause in there. Okay, I understand it, but God said that's because of the hardness of the heart. Yeah. Let me say the hardness yeah. of the heart. Yeah. And some of us have a problem with God. Not giving us another out with unreconcilable differences. My wife and I are different. She likes purple, I like blue. That's unreconcilable. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Just the way it is. You yeah. say preacher's not that simple. You know the reason why? Because we want to make it hard or we want to get an outlet and God said no, they got a problem with me. I talked about marriage. You leave your husband, I mean your father and your mother and as a husband you get to your wife and you take and make your wife the center of your joy beside the Lord. Amen. They got a problem. Remember, I, I, I just don't see it like you see it. I'm not having you see it like I see it. I'm actually looking to see it. Right. Right. Yeah. We got a problem with God. Yeah. And this might really hear lip song. Uh -oh. Not only there are problems today, some of the particulars like morality and marriage, mm -hmm. but today in this world, that's why in the church, mm -hmm. there's a problem with ministry. Yeah. Oh, wow. yeah. 
Yeah. Let me just put it down with a rubber piece of rose. Yeah. God never said a woman can be a pastor. Yeah. 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 You don't have to say amen. I'm just going to tell you the Bible said, what? Are you still with me now? Yeah. He said in 1 Timothy 3, 1 and 12, this is a true saying. If a man, if a man, if a man desire the office of a bishop, the, office, the bishop is the elder, is the, is the pastor, the overseer. Amen. Yeah. He desires the good work. A bishop then must be blameless and the husband, husband, husband yeah. of one wife. Amen. Yeah. And I don't know how she can be the husband of one wife. Come on, Come on, preacher. Yeah. I'm not going to get into the detail. People talk about it again. Well, that's one at a time. But I'm not even going to argue with that. If it's one at a time, it's one woman at a time with one man. Come on, help me yeah, now. Yeah. But I believe God yeah. said that that man is supposed to have a wife if he's going to be the pastor. And ain't no pastor. Only you serve authority. A woman, you serve authority on a man. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. We got a problem with God. I don't. Matter of fact, I even tell my wife sometimes, I say, I'm going to let you preach today. She said, no, you're not. <laughs> I said, you don't want that job? No, I do not. Oh, why not? It, it, it's hard. And she said, God didn't give it to me. Yeah. Right. Amen. When are we going to have some women that finally stand up and say, y'all can do what you want to, but that's not the job God gave. Mm -hmm. That's right. Yeah. That's right. I haven't did that in a long time, but I'm going to say again, Miss Sue, we got a problem with our morals, we got a problem in marriage, and we got a problem in ministry. Because people don't want to hold the position they should be in. Yeah. Can I keep on going? Yeah. We got a problem with the precision of God. Precision. He's precise. <laughs> don't give you enough leeway, does he? Come on now. Yeah. We got a problem with that. Uh, and again, the world started, but it somehow has gotten into the church. When I talk about the procedure, I want you to understand something here. The God that I serve has not waited for 2023 to come around and say, I think we better change some of what we said because we don't fit that generation. God's word is final. Yeah. And let me just give you a couple of things. It's okay with Jamie preaching. This is okay. All right. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. If, if not, Jacob would say it is. <laughs> he, he heard those saying about a man said, told his wife, he said, I want you to know I'm in charge. And he got up off the floor and said, I'm going to say it again. <laughs> James chapter 1 verse 17 the Bible says that every good gift and perfect uh, a perfect gift is from above and coming down from the Father like it is with whom is no fairness nor shadow of turning That's right. God doesn't have to change God doesn't just have to tweak it they write this down Hebrews 13 verse 8 Jesus Christ the same yesterday and today and forever I think you and I need to get just some things down real quick here when it comes to this word right here get this now is inspired directly from God. That's the reason why it's pure. Yeah. Yeah. That's the reason why it's not messed up. Yeah. This is not man. Man wants us to think his way. And God says, no, it's my way. Mm -hmm. People say, is he saying it's my way or the highway? Well, you take it however you want to. <laughs> God's way is the way. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Amen. And God is saying that is how it is. And you and I need to decide something right now here today. Listen to me now. I'm going to accept God's word as it is. And stop trying to change it. Yeah. Yeah. Not, only, not only do we amen somebody. Yeah. Right. You need to understand that God's word is final. God's word is 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 is, is, is correct. And God's word is sure enough to work in your life if you're letting. Yeah. 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 What's our problem with God? What's our problem with God? I don't like what he said. I don't like what he said. Mm. So let me just kind of get this thing to a close. Are you still there? Say amen. Yeah. I told you it wouldn't be long. I, was, I, I kept the tomatoes down so far. I'm keep, it, keep going. Amen. What's the problem, preacher? This world does not believe God. There's total disbelief in there's a God in heaven. Total disbelief that there's a God in heaven. Not only is there total disbelief that there's a God in heaven, 
Matter of fact, there is a God. We want him to be our God, the one we pick, the one we choose. Yeah. Right. Not there a total disbelief, but there's a total disregard for the word that he gave right. mm. I understand what, 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 what you say he said, but he needs to understand the world that we're living in. I'm, listen, I'm going to say it again. I've said it before. I'm sick and tired of politicians who say that they love God and they, they live for God and they don't lift up God's word when it's time yeah. to yeah, yeah. 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 Amen. Yeah. Amen. We should never, with all the so-called Christians in politics, yeah. have it to where men can marry men and is legal. Yeah. Yeah. I better say that again, Miss Dan. No way, if they say they love God and they say they love this book, no way a vote should get through saying it's okay to marry a man if yeah. you are a man. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. When we said, I said it, that's right. Amen. Yeah. I mean, but I book out so you wouldn't think I was somebody else. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just sick and tired of it today. Yeah. I'm tired of the way that they treat my God. I'm tired of the way yeah. we respond to the church. I'm tired of the fact that nobody will stand up, stand up for Jesus. Yeah. I'm tired of it. And you say, preachers, what are you going to do? I'm going to preach the word. Yeah. Get rid of a God because yeah. of their disbelief and their disregard and their total disobedience yeah. to the word of God. Yeah. But let me tell you something here. What's going to happen is sooner or later they're going to be destroyed yeah. by God. Yeah. Yeah. I don't want that to happen to me. Would you write some things down and real quickly we're going to close. Hebrews 9, 27. Hebrews 9, 27. And it's the point that the man wants to die. But after this, the judgment. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. You gonna, you gonna, it's going to be a judgment coming. Right. Yep. And there's not a thing you can do about it. Right. Yeah. Write this one down. Are you still with me? Yeah. Romans 14, verse 11 and 12. For it is written, as I live, said the Lord, every knee shall bow to me, yeah. and every tongue shall confess to God. Yeah. Now watch this, verse 12. So that every one of us shall give account of himself right. to God. That's good. Yeah. Yeah. I said, okay, you want to live like that? Don't, wait a minute. You never said. Sooner or later, you might have to stand before me. Yeah. Yeah. Sooner or later, you have to give an account. If the unsaved, yeah, books will be open. They'll be judged out of the books and cast into the lake of fire. Yeah. But even those of us that say we're saved, and if you are, I'm not going to be the one to judge that. That's not going to be on me. But God, knows, God is saying, how can you say you love me? and act that way or think that way or do that way. Yeah. Yeah. Because you know what? We got a problem with God. Yeah. We got a problem with God. So here's the thing I want you to write. First of all, one day, the judge is coming. Amen. There's going to be a judge. Oh, by the way, it ain't going to be you and I. Right. right. It ain't going to be some judge that sits on some court that says we can't define what a woman is. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. I said, that's right. It's not going to be one of those judges. Okay. Not going to be one of those judges, again, who have twisted things according to their uh, uh, political uh, 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 mindset. No, 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 no. It's not going to be one of those judges. It's going to be the righteous judge. Come on, somebody. Yeah. It's going to be the righteous judge. Yeah. And here's what he's going to do when he sits there. He's not going to sit there and basically just let you, let's, are you still with me? Yeah. Let you give your argument. Right. Come on. Here's what's going to happen. He's going to give his argument. Yeah. Matter of fact, God said over to the children of Israel, i got a controversy with you. Yeah. Right. And, he, and he said, if you got something to say, go ahead and say it. Then all of a sudden, watch this brother, 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 uh, Conan, he's kept on talking. Because he said, what you got to say ain't even worth listening to. Right. Right. Help me, somebody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. God, by the way, let me help you with something this. God's not going to let you get a, a, a jury of your peers. <laughs> no, no, no. God, judging ain't going to be happening like that. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. God's going to have the goods on it all. Yeah. Yeah. So it's going to be the judge, and there's going to be the judge, and then there's going to be the final judgment. Yeah. Hand it down the sentence. Again, I don't know all about it, but I do know one thing. You and I are going to be able to make excuses. Right. This world's not going to be able to make excuses. Yeah. Nobody's going to say, well, God, you know, really didn't understand. God said, yes, you did, but you had a problem with me. Right. You didn't like the way I was doing everything. Mm. 
What's the problem today in the world? I'm going to just nail it down and you and I need to settle it. It all boils down to one thing. What's the real problem? God's authority in my life. God gets to reign, gets to rule. God gets to regulate my life. I don't like it. By the way, can I just help you with something? How many of you said, I don't like the way they're ruling my life? So we don't like it. But we definitely don't like it when we don't get to say so with God. Yeah, right. And God is saying, you can believe you can not like it all you want to. But they said when I was growing up, that's the way it is. <laughs> and I said it that way, Miss Danny, because I wanted you to get it is. We used to say that's the way it is. That's the way it is. <laughs> yeah, it, it is like that. Amen. If you haven't grown up without growing up, you don't know what that is, so that's when I said the other way first. <laughs> but God says, if you got a problem, let's get it squared away. What's that? Let me have the place I want to have. By the way, I'm not gonna hurt you. I'm not gonna hurt you. As a matter of fact, I can turn this whole thing around. The answer for the world today is Jesus Christ. Amen. I can turn this thing around. There's no way I'm going to turn it around out there if I can't turn it around. Amen. Because yeah. some of us just don't like God's authority, His commandments, the way He tells His principles. He said, You don't like that. It's time for to follow in old fashioned God and say, God, I'm sorry. Would you forgive me? Would you forgive me? Here's the great thing about God. If we confess our sins, He's not the best of Somebody say amen. Father, thank you so much again for the truth of your word. I think enough has been said. I hope that God there won't be any troubles. But if there is, I'm not backing down. I want to say it. Because I know that dear God, your word, your way, your will for our lives is a good way and a better way than just surrendering.